Hello, Kings Clubbers. It is great to see you. Why don't we pray before we go any further? Father God, we love you and we thank you that you love us. And today we want to pray for all those who lead us. We pray for our Prime Minister and for his government. We pray for the new Mayor of London. We pray for our Queen and other members of the Royal Family. Father God, thank you for those who lead us in the country and also who lead us in our church. We pray for Mike and Tony and Richard and Shay. We pray for our elders. God bless every one of them. Amen. Amen. It's great to see you. And today, our key point is... Our key point is, with God, I can... Is that a fanfare I can hear? And a fanfare at King's Club can only mean one thing, it is time for our Bible bit. And today our Bible bit comes from one of those books of letters. It comes from the book called Philippians, which was a letter written to the church that met in a place called Philippi. That's why it's called Philippians. Not that there was somebody there called Ian or Philip. And it's from Philippians, chapter 4 verse 13 and Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says this I can do all things through Jesus because he gives me strength okay we've got a video for you to watch and it's got some people doing some impossible seeming things with their body can you see whether you can do any of these impossible things have a watch the sun is coming up, are you ready to go? We can take a ride, we can take it slow Your will is my law, I'ma let you be the boss Cause I'll go where you go I'll take you to a place, we can see it all Step off the edge, I can break your fall Your will is my law, I'ma let you be the boss Cause I'll go where you go We are kings of the world And anywhere it's going We are kings of the world And tonight it's a big world We are kings of the world able to do any of those things can you lick your elbow or oh, do that thing with your eyebrows I don't think I'm very good of the thing with the thumbs I don't think I can do any of those impossible things if you can I'd love to see a photograph but in our story from the Bible today we're going to hear about somebody who was asked by God to do something which seemed to him quite impossible he just didn't think that he was strong enough or brave enough or powerful enough to do the God that God had asked him to do. But with God's strength, he was able to do it. Let's watch the story of Gideon together. Good morning. Here is the good news. No one is ever too young, too weak or too insignificant to work for the King of Kings. Take the story of Gideon, for example. Gideon was the youngest member of the smallest family in the least significant and least important tribe of the whole of Israel. Hello, I'm a... <coughs> well, um, I'm a... Gideon, actually. <laughs> but God chose Gideon to defeat the terrifying army, the Midianites. Who, me? Yes, you! But have you seen those Midianites? Well, I suppose being an angel you have, but I mean, those fellas are big. And when I say they're big, I mean those fellas are strong. And to be honest with you, I'm not even a seven stone weakling. I'm only a six and a half stone weakling. And apart from all that, today is Tuesday. 
Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday is my day off. Gideon, get up at once. Yes, sir. Gideon, when I tell you that I want you to go and fight the Midianites and blast them into smithereens, right, I mean me. you, right? Just one more question. One more question. What about if I have measles? Gideon, you do not have measles. But I really wish I did have measles. Gideon, even if you did have the measles, you would still have to go and fight the Midianites. The Midianites. Right, just one more question. One more question. How do I know that this isn't all some kind of joke? You know, let's all have a bit of a laugh. Let's send that skinny, weedy, weak Gideon out and watch him get hacked to bits by those nasty, mean Midianites. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would be the first to make a complete and utter fool of someone like me. Only, if I'm going to go and fight the Midianites, then I'm going to need a bit of proof, right? So, um, let's say I, I lay this fleece, this sheepskin out on the grass, and then in the morning when I wake up, there's dew on the sheepskin, but the grass is dry, that would be a miracle, right? Right. So that would be proof, right? Right. Right. So Gideon laid out the sheepskin and went to bed. Not snuggly. He's going to have to fight the Midianites. He's going to have to be doubly sure that the Lord is on his side. So let's say we'll try it the other way around. This time we'll have dew on the grass. The grass is wet and the sheepskin's dry and it's the deal. Done. Right. So Gideon went back to bed. So Gideon had to go and fight the Midianites. Right, I'm getting a bodyguard. A bodyguard of 50,000 men. By the left, two, three, left, right, left, right. Uh, Gideon. Squad, halt! Gideon, who are they? Who? Those soldiers. Oh, oh, oh those soldiers, just, just a few school friends come to help her. Chum? Gideon, no school has that many pupils and the Lord doesn't need that many soldiers to fight. He finds that an insult to his power. Get rid of them. Uh, right, uh, you and you and you, you can go. Just keep a few. <sighs> all right, okay. You can stay and you can all go. Well, it's a very long story, but the Lord proved his point. Gideon, the youngest member of the smallest family in the least important and least significant tribe of the whole of Israel, with just a handful of men, utterly defeated the Midianites. Bam!
Pow! <laughs> I don't know my own strength. Well, what I mean is the Lord's strength. And rescued Israel. Long live Gideon! Oh, it was, uh, it was nothing really. Well, I mean, it was really quite something, I suppose, that God should choose someone like me to, uh, you know, defeat the Midianites. So that's the good news. The younger you are, the weaker you are, the smaller you are, the more insignificant you feel. So the God of all creation wants to take your life and make it dynamite. I wonder how you would have felt if God had asked you to do what God had asked Gideon to do, to go and take on a mighty army, the Midianites, the fierce, strong Midianites. Gideon, he didn't feel strong at all. He felt weak and small and insignificant. He just felt like he couldn't do it. But God knew that with God's strength, Gideon was able to do it. And it was a bit like this cotton wool. If this cotton wool represents Gideon and this Jaffa Cakes tin represents the Midianite army, one cotton wool bull is not going to squish this army. And it's true, Gideon, he went off and he got a lot more men to come and join. 50,000 men he got straight away. And God said, that's too many because I can do it through my strength. We don't need a huge army. And God told Gideon to get rid of most of the, the men that he called. He only allowed Gideon to choose and to keep 300 men. But 300 men against the Midianite army was still a bit like one cotton wool ball trying to squish this huge tin. But with God's help, Gideon was able to do it. With God's power and strength, Gideon was able to get rid of that Midianite army. On his own, he couldn't do it, but with God's help, with God's power and God's strength, Gideon was able to do something which seemed impossible. And whenever God asks us to do something, he will always give us the power and the strength that we need to complete the task. On our own, in our own strength, it will be impossible. But when we ask God to help us, when we ask God to get involved, with him working with us, he makes us strong and powerful. Strong, just as he made weak Gideon strong. Pow, said Gideon at the end of that story. And he knew that it wasn't his own strength, but it was God helping him to do it. So maybe God's asking you to do something. Maybe things that seem hard, maybe to, to stand out from the crowd at school, to, to do the right thing when maybe it would be a lot easier to follow the crowd and do the wrong thing. God will give you the strength that you need to do it. All we need to do is to ask for his help. I think we'll finish that there, but we're gonna finish with a song which kind of fits in with, we're talking about how powerful God is. And it's that song, God can do anything, anything at all. Do you remember it goes, don't put him in a box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you, don't put him in a box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what God can do. Don't put him in a box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. God can do anything. We haven't met together to sing these songs for so long, have we? It's going to be great when we can meet together, do the actions, Sam and Caramel out the front leading us and us all joining in. But until then, join in at home, enjoy the song and we'll see you next time. Have a fantastic week! Don't shove him in a corner, don't you limit what he can do Don't put him in a box, don't shove him in a corner Don't you limit what he can do God can do anything, anything at all God can do anything, anything at all Nothing is too big for him and nothing is too small God can do anything, anything at all Don't put him in a box
box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. Don't put him in a box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. Got him do anything. Is too big for him and nothing is too small. God can do anything, anything at all. Don't put him in the box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. Don't put him in the box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. God can do anything, anything at all. God can do anything, anything at all. Nothing is too big for him and nothing is too small. God can do anything, anything at all. Don't put him in the box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do. Don't put him in the box, don't shove him in the corner. Don't you limit what he can do.